This lesson is over theoretical yields, actual yields, and percent yields. I just want to start off by saying up to this point in our class, we've already learned about theoretical yields. A theoretical yield, if you want to make this little note next to the word theoretical, it basically means the calculation. Every time we've been doing G, W, and R in set two and set three, kind of the bulk of what we've been doing in this stoichiometry unit, you have actually been calculating a theoretical yield. An actual yield, if you want to make a little note next to this word, comes from an experiment. If you're actually in a lab setting and you have your hands on an actual product, you put it on a balance, weigh it out, find the mass, that's the actual yield, what you do in the lab. A percent yield is going to be the calculation that's the difference, not really the difference, but it's a percentage between your theoretical and actual yield. And in a kind of give you an idea of how well your experiment went. Did you produce the product you were supposed to, or did you lose some product along the way? Um, so that's just a little preview of these terms, theoretical, actual, and percent yield. And another term I want to throw out is um, just the word yield in general. Yield means product. So we're doing calculations for a product, things on the right side of an equation, things on the right side of the arrow. So keep that in mind too. Here are the words to kind of support the things that I just mentioned in that previous slide. Let's see if there's anything different here than I actually said. And here's that, oops. here's that emphasis. Um, that actual yield is also referred to as experimental yield. And here's the theoretical yield description. But I just talked about that in the last slide. So here's the first example. It says, uh, what is the theoretical yield of Na2SO4 in grams if 35 moles of NaOH is reacted with sufficient H2SO4? Now, when we look at this problem, um, this is actually part one of a percent yield problem. We're actually breaking up the a percent yield problem. You haven't seen the actual question yet, but I'm going to guide you through baby steps to get there. This is a typical problem that um, you already know how to solve, but we're just throwing in a new vocabulary word, theoretical yield. So um, here are a few tips. Yield means product. Theoretical yield means um, the, through the calculation, how what should we get? And um, here is the actual example with the balanced equation. Now, um, given 3.50 moles of NaOH, the only number given, since we want um, Na2SO4 in grams, that's going to be our want. And notice that Na2SO4 is a product, which means we can't calculate a percent yield for it because yield means product. And when it comes to the relationships, we're going to use the same process that we have in the other lessons, where if we have two different substances, write a multiple ratio between this guy and that one. So two moles of NaOH, we're getting the numbers from the coefficients. 2 moles of NaOH to 1 mole of Na2SO4. Uh, we also see a unit of grams, and grams um, is a hint to tell you to calculate the molar mass of Na2SO4. So get those calculators out, get those periodic tables out, and hit pause and take a moment to calculate 2 sodiums plus sulfur plus oxygen times 4 off the numbers from your periodic table. If you're ready to see that calculation for the molar mass, you can compare it to mine to make sure you got 142.042 grams. But again, always be thorough with the way you write your molar mass. Just always write one mole of the substance formula to the molar mass in grams of the substance's formula. We don't need the molar mass of NaOH in this example. We don't see the term grams next to NaOH, so we're not gonna calculate that molar mass. And we can start the problem with our given over one, Make sure our units of moles of NaOH cancel out with moles of NaOH. This ratio comes from this example right, or this ratio right here. We want our units to cancel out diagonally, so after the given, if, it's to, if it started with moles of NaOH, I took this moles of NaOH and I placed it in the bottom diagonal from the given. I'm going to keep going with the problem. If I see moles of Na2SO4 in the top diagonal from that, I'm going to take moles of Na2SO4, not the grams part, the moles part. I need the unit and substance to cancel out diagonally, and I'll put it in the denominator and 142.042 grams. 
micrograms of Na2SO4 goes in the top. When I do my calculation in the calculator, I'm going to type in 3.50 divided by 2 times 142.042. And my answer rounded to 3 sig figs is 249 grams of Na2SO4. This is the theoretical yield. You already know how to do this type of calculation, but we're just giving it a name. We're not done with the problem. This is just half of the problem. So let me continue on with a lesson, and then I'll come back to this number, 249 grams, and I'll show you how we can incorporate it in a problem. So here's an equation from the back of your periodic table. This is from the formula cards, the star formula cards. Percent yield equals actual yield divided by theoretical yield times 100. I've shown you an alternative version of this equation because I've found over the years that my students really prefer this um, ratio type setup where you can actually cross multiply to calculate one of the missing um, factors in the equation. So either one of these, they mean the same thing, but just know that this formula is on the back of your periodic table. We're going to, we have the theoretical yield already for this problem. We're actually going to take the actual yield and insert it into the rest of this equation so we can calculate the percent yield. So here is the rest of the problem. From the examples above, so we're referring to that 249 grams that we just calculated. If 221 grams of sodium sulfate were actually collected, meaning you're in a lab, you collect the amount, and 221 grams was recovered, we want to calculate the percent yield. So there's that 221 grams of sodium sulfate. We have the actual in the numerator divided by the theoretical, which we calculated in two slides ago times 100, this is the percent yield for the problem. This is the percent yield um, for the problem, meaning although you expected 249 grams to be produced through the experiment, you were only able to recover 221. And what you should realize is in a real life setting, things happen. You accidentally spill stuff. Maybe you accidentally read a graduated cylinder incorrectly, or maybe you weren't being as precise as you should have been when measuring out chemicals and that's what would re that's what would contribute to a lower percentage yield. Your goal is 100, but in reality, we don't typically get 100%. Now, if you get over 100%, that means that you didn't quite do the experiment right in one way or another that you um, and we'll, we might do an experiment 